Hey everyone, happy Monday. I hope y'all are all having a fantastic day today. Hmm, on a scale of 1 to 10, how are y'all doing? How was y'all's weekend? Hmm, was it a 1? Was it pretty bad? Or was it a 10? Super awesome. All right. Well, if it was anything below a 5, let's go ahead and turn that around and let's have a 10 day. All right. So, Today we will be reading Women Artists A to Z. Now this month is Women's History Month, so we're going to be looking into um, art women artists that made a difference in the art world. Today I want y'all to read or follow along with me as I read this book, and then you will find an artist that you enjoyed, and you will find at least three different pictures that they created and you'll be creating an art based off of theirs. Now I'm gonna hold this up for just a few minutes so you can look at all the different artists that this book will be talking about. All right, once you find an artist that you enjoy after I finish reading, you will go ahead and look up a couple images, th at least three, and then you will create a drawing based off of their artwork. All right, let's go ahead and begin reading, and then I will show you what I created. Women Artists A to Z. By Melanie LaBurge, illustrated by Caroline Corrigan. A is for Angel. Mirka Mora. Mirka Mora made paintings that look like lush forests afloat with colorful angels. Her mix of animals, winged cherubs, and humans swirl together in nature, filling her pieces with the magic of the world around us and inside of us. B is for Box. Betty Sar. Betty is known for assembling materials within a box. She filled the boxes with personal treasures and found objects in order to tell stories, celebrate Black history and culture, and to confront and examine racist stereotypes and images. C is for color. Helen Franken. Helen Franken Thaler. Helen created pieces called color-filled paintings, large as builds and full of color. Instead of painting in, in an easel, she tried something new, laying the canvas on the floor and soaking it in the flowing paints that seeped into the fabric. D is for dots. Yayo Kusama. Yayo loved dots, and for more than 50 years, she has put dots on canvases, walls, trees, and her clothes and body. She has even created infinity rooms where people can enter and be completely surrounded by dots. E is for eggs. K. Sage. K was a surrealist painter, meaning she showed ordinary things in a way that is new or unfamiliar. She often put eggs in paintings of landscapes and buildings, eggs in the hallway, a giant egg leaning on the stairs. That's surreal. F is for flower. Georgia O'Keeffe. Georgia captivated the world with her flowers. She would paint the same flower over and over, bigger and bigger, closer and closer. Her art shows us how to look deeply at everything and to see nature in a whole new way. G is for grid. Agnes Martin. Agnes was inspired by a vision to make grid paintings. She used rulers to draw rectangles and pencils across the surface of her painted square canvases. Many of her grids were so big that she had to use a ladder to reach them. Asia's for horse. Jean Quick to see Smith. Jean's 
are confronts the mistreatment of indigenous people and land in the United States. She often includes horses as both a personal symbol. Her father was a horse trader and a political one, reminding us of the ties between humans and nature. I is for ink. Elizabeth Catlett. Elizabeth created art in many forms from screen prints to sculptures to lino cuts that used ink. She often centered the experiences of women and children sculpting and stamping images of African-American imagination, activism, and love into art. J is for Jolly, Judith Leister. Judith was a painter more than 300 years ago. Many thought her jolly paintings had been made by men because working female artists were so rare at the time. It is easy to spot her work, though she always painted a star into her signature. K is for kitchen. Lenora Carrington. Lenora's painting of magical mythical creatures began in the kitchen. She mixed eggs and pigment to make a paint called egg tempera. Just like a chef or a scientist, Lenora loved transforming ordinary ingredients into something magnificent. L is for line. Carmen Herrera. Carmen paints large blocks of colors side by side onto canvases so that in the space where the two colors meet, lines come to life. She spent more than 10 years painting a series with only white and green called Blanco y Verde. That is Spanish for white and green. <laughs> M is for marble. Edmonia Lewis. Edmonia sculpted mountains of marble into smooth, life-size human figures while perfecting classic techniques of sculpture. She carved out the stories of Native Americans and newly freed Africans and West Indians. N is for nature. Maya Lin. Maya uses nat natural materials often recycled such as glass, metal, wood, and dirt. Her work helps us think about our environment by resizing and reimagining parts of nature, such as when she constructed a whole field of rolling hills to mirror the ocean waves. O is for opposites. Hilma af Clint. Hilma was always trying to paint the unseen from the tiniest parts of life, like the cells we are made of. To the expansive energy of the universe, many of her paintings contain the balance of opposites, light and dark, small and large, up and down. P is for pottery. Maria Martinez, Maria molded coils of clay into both beautifully delicate and strong pieces of pottery. The black on black design was part of the San Edenso uh, Pueblo's community, traditions in which shapes and mythical creatures appear in the shiny glaze painted on the darkened clay. Q is for quilt. G's Bend. The G's Bend Collective doesn't refer to one artist, but to many generations of African American women in G's Bend, Alabama. They gather to weave community and geom geometry into modern art quilts that grace clotheslines and museum walls. R is for roots. Frida Kahlo. Frida made paintings that were small in scale, but very large in impact. She created colorful and revolutionary self-portraits filled with an imaginary rooted in her Mexican identity and culture and influenced by the indigenous roots of Mexico. S is for spider. Luis Borges. Luis's large metal spider sculptures are lovingly called Maman, the French word for mother. 
In honor of her own mama, Josephine Louise spent so many years of her life making spiders, both big and small, that she is often referred to as Spider Woman. Tia's Fur Technique Louise Milo Jones Louise used a multitude of techniques to make art. She designed vibrant textiles, painted realistic portraits, watercolored cityscapes and landscapes, and collaged abstract paintings with African and Haitian imagery. As a teacher, she also encouraged generations of artists to try their own different approaches. You is for unique. Alice Nail. Alice painted friends, family, and neighbors, capturing each person's unique energy and style. Unlike many artists of her era who focused on abstract work, she chose to create portraits that allowed each individual's personality to come through with her own one-of-a-kind style of painting. V is for Veil. Helen Zaghab. Helen paints women wearing the abaya, a veiled garment worn by some Muslim women. In much of her work, she even reimagines famous pieces of Western art by including Eastern imagery to create a dialogue between cultures that move beyond stereotypes. W is for wood. Ursula von Reidensberg Ursula, as a sculptor who has worked with cedar for many years, the pungent smell of wood lingers long after she's done sculpting it. Some of Ursula's imaginative pieces are small enough to hang on walls, while others need a wide outdoor space. X is for exposure. Dorothea Lane. Dorothea was a photographer known for her empathetic portraits. Her photos or exposures revealed the effects of poverty and inequality on families across the United States during the Great Depression. Why is for yarn? Zenobia Bailey. Zenobia's yarn based art weaves Together, the traditions of African-American, indigenous, and Eastern cultures, her mandalas are spiraling symbols of joy, art, resilience, and our connection to one another. Z is for zoology. Mariah Siblea Marion. Mariah collected and painted insects from a young age, creating her own view of the world and her own type of zoology, watching silkworms metamorphosis, metamorphosize from earth to sky probably helped inspire her own transformations from artist to scientist. All right. If y'all would like to check out this book, um, it'll be by my door. There's also some coloring pages if you'd like to pick them up. Please remember to sanitize your hands before using the book and after. I hope y'all enjoyed re this read along and I look forward to seeing the art inspired by these artists again. Here are the artists from the book and I will go ahead and show you what I created. All right, so here is the drawing that I created. Can y'all tell which artist I was inspired by? Hmm. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed that read along and I look forward to seeing what y'all create. Now, y'all can be as creative as you want, but remember to be inspired by an artist. When you turn in your artwork, I'm gonna ask for the artist that inspired you and why they inspired you. And then you will go ahead and turn in your picture. Now, if the turn in does not work, please let me know in the chat. Um, I will make an announcement. Once I make that announcement, feel free to not worry about letting me know if the, if the turn in didn't work. Um, I will go ahead and uh, delete the assignment and we will uh, try again tomorrow. <laughs> well, I hope to see all y'all's wonderful artwork and I look forward to seeing what artist inspired you. All right, I'll see y'all all tomorrow.